And hello everybody, welcome back to today's video, today's video live stream in fact. Uh, Rangers have secured signing number two, as we mentioned earlier it was very very close but it is a done deal. Rangers have signed Mohamed Demande, yes, signing number two through the door, Philippe Clement has got his man and someone you probably didn't really know until obviously today, until he started to be, uh, until Danish reports stated that a move was very very close um, however a midfielder that can get you guys very very excited he looks like um, and at, <clears throat> at the start of the the new sort of transition into sort of Nils Koopen uh, <clears throat> Nils Koopen of course coming in from PSV and it does look has his sort of stamp written all over it with regards to his sort of transfer recruitment over the years at PSV it does seem like a PSV um, sort of signing so maybe one from the old black book of his that he's brought over and came over for Rangers but um, so Certainly a signing that's going to meet the criteria of what we've got for the future. You know, a player that's going to make an impact now, um, but also a player that's going to go in and sell and earn as a profit in the future, which Rangers have also missed out over the last few years. Our recruitment strategy has been honestly appalling, uh, to, to be perfectly honest with you. But... Great to see that signing number two is done. A midfielder, I know a lot of you guys were stating in the comment section below, why a, why a midfielder? We need a striker. Guys, remember there's 10 days left to go of this January transfer window and Rangers are still going to make another couple more additions. There's probably going to be a striker coming in through the door. There's obviously going to be a winger coming in through the door, but a midfield was something that we needed revamped as well. I said at the start of the transfer window, I would like to see Rangers sign a striker. I would like to see Rangers sign a left back. I would like to see Rangers sign a midfielder and a winger they were my sort of four players that I discussed the four positions that I kind of discussed um, so we've got two um, I do believe Fabio Silva may need a bit of help especially after yesterday's showing against Dan Barton in terms of Cyril Dessers yes I know he got on the score sheet but my goodness me three or four of those balls hit people's windows I feel sorry for the locals around the Dumbarton Stadium if there is any there uh, because their, their, their uh, kitchen windows would have been smashed in with some of his shots so um, it's clear that we we still need a striker but look be happy a midfielder that's coming in a versatile midfielder a player with extreme or pedigree you know a player that's came through the same route as Mohamed Kudus who's tearing up trees down in the Premier League at this moment in time a player with bags of experience playing in the Danish Super League. It's not too bad, actually, for 22. He's over 100 appearances, 111 appearances, to be precise. He's played in Europe. He's, uh, he's he's done well in Europa Conference League. He also has some decent numbers to his game as well for a midfielder uh, with 13 goals, 14 assists. So not too shabby. Uh, but as I said, the, the, the key to him is a versatility. He'll be a key component um, to it in his addition where he can play across the middle of the park. But certainly a player that more is of dig into the more I watch yes I know sometimes compilation clips on YouTube can be a bit misleading but sometimes when you do a little bit of a deep dive in the player you can start to get slightly excited having said that I was very very excited about Jose Sinfuentes and he hasn't really lived up to it however that was under the old sort of regime of our transfer strategy and I believe Philippe Clement um, having his say on the matter Niels Cooper with a, a real good history of recruiting players in, in, from a similar sort of model um, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what this boy's all about you know he's been compared to sort of Mohamed Kudas he's come through that sort of right to dream path as well and certainly a player that's been watched by many German clubs RB Leipzig another one that was heavily linked to the player and RB Leipzig have got a very 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 good pedigree and history of recruiting very very well so again if they're sort of linked to that sort of player you know they, they, there's, there's been some homework been done there and I do believe this guy could be a success um, and under this manager as well I do believe this manager does get the best out of the player so it's really really good to see on that front um, but yeah I'm excited to see what he's all about However, this hasn't got to be this isn't got to be the end of our transfer business at this moment in time. We still have a lot more to do uh, for Rangers, as you guys keep on stating down there in the comments. A striker is a needs must. A left back potentially for Edvan Yalmas is going out of the door. We still contracts up and air. As I said, Philippe Comont very um, vocal about the five players um, whose contracts are expiring come the end of the uh, coming coming the end of the season, which is an absolute disgrace. So there's still some more stuff to sort of tie up, some more things to do. But in this 
this January transfer window after last night showing against Dumbarton. Yes, we got the win. Yes, Cyril Dess has got a goal. But it's clear as day at this moment in time that we need a striker. We do need a striker that needs to be the next player that comes in through the door. Whether that's Lauren Shankland remains to be seen. Whether that's another striker that Nils Coopin and, and Philippe Clement identify, it remains to be seen. But one thing for sure, if we want to compete for the title, go far in Europe, win the Scottish Cup as well, we need another striker in through the door as also. But look, let's enjoy this. It's been about 21 days, three weeks, a long January transfer window of plenty of rumours, but we finally got signing number two through the through the door, and it's in the midfield position, somewhere that we do need to revamp. We've had a bit of an injury crisis in there at this moment in time, and we are lacking a bit of that creativity. More not lacking creativity. I think Lundstrom's come onto a game. I do think our problem isn't with the middle of the part, but due to sort of Ryan Jack's sort of contract running down, other players, John Lundstrom's contract running down, um, the midfield slightly aging injury problems at, at, at times as well it's good to get some fresh blood bedded in and, and, and see what this boy is all about but as stated striker is a needs must next and a winger also um, depending on Ridvan potentially a left back could be a busy 10 days for us but as Philippe keeps on stating we aren't the richest club in the world and we can't just go and buy who we want in terms of a fee guys with regards to Mohamed um, uh, Diamande um, the fee I don't know just yet unfortunately I'm trying to dig for that fee at this moment in time again um, yes it's a done deal yes uh, everything's done however um, with a fee nobody can get a definitive answer I've been digging everywhere for it however transfer market have um, valued the player around 2.5 million quid his contract's up next summer so you know if he's only got a year and a half left on his deal then you know reports are stating it could be a fee of around 2 million quid again I'm not too sure. That's a ballpark figure. Again, from close, uh, from sources kind of close and sources that I sort of trust. However, there is no definitive sort of figure or fee at this moment in time. And you'll have to wait till Rangers' official announcement for that, which will be later today or tomorrow. Um, so depending on when you're watching this live stream, it may have all of it already been officially announced. However, um, again, that could be the official announcement will happen either tonight or tomorrow. And as we always do, guys, we always go a bit early with regards to the sort of transfers, try and get out to you just before Rangers just do announce it um, but as I say 100% record so far on this channel I've been doing this for four years um, so do be um, do be confident that Rangers have acquired signing number two of the January transfer window I wouldn't go too uh, early if uh, that wasn't the case but yeah let me take some thoughts and opinions guys let's try and keep this amount uh, Diamande I know a lot of fans wanting a striker in next of course but a midfielder again is um, is, is a fantastic addition let's, let's see what people were talking about with regards to Diamande in himself um i just want to see a bit of positivity with regards to him um hello good friends and this could be a good signing but of course a striker as well as a defender says the back the great everyone's saying the same uh william says we'd like to see the boy lind come in now in cordoba uh hi says we aiden good to see you and of course as where does he play midfield uh know nothing about the lad but wish him well with us as gross scotland exactly but this is what i'm saying sometimes you're hearing all these names that rangers have signed over the past you know you get the big names that have done this done that done this done that however they've never really lived up to the hype as someone said in the comment section earlier on i was wrong yes i know jermaine defoe made an impact but i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the bigger picture jermaine defoe made an impact for the here and now but with regards to our recruitment strategy he you know came in um and then left of course so he didn't make as money yeah he made an instant impact at that time but our terms of our recruitment strategy over the years has been absolutely woeful and it's almost been a shotgun approach um i hate to say it across the city and i don't like to talk about the other lot across the city but they've done well with regards to their recruitment strategy over a 10-year period. Yes, they've had some duds come in, but more or less over the last 10 years, they've been able to flip players, find players, flip them, find them, flip them, and also have the same amount of success um, during that period. So that's what Rangers need to try and do, but better. We're obviously a better side. We do it in Europe as well, so we can offer that and you know probably get more money because our players perform in Europe as well. So that's something uh, that we have the advantage of. But looking at Benfica's transfer strategy, Ajax's transfer strategy of there's other clubs out there, Brighton now coming into it, but Benfica probably the main ones, the main dogs, top dogs. Uh, that's what we need to try and be aspiring to do at this moment in time, and um, and try and have a business model like that because you can have sustained success, and you can also still make a hefty profit, especially playing in a poor league like our one in terms of uh, poor league, not in terms of quality. I wouldn't begrudge the Scottish league. Uh, I mean, poor league in terms of you know 
the, the finances that come with the division itself. So um, it is what it is. Uh, but let's have a little look through some more comments, guys. Here's hoping he hits the ground running. We need to be moving forwards now. We still have another three at least. Exactly. Well, again, with regards to it, I would be hoping that this... This, I don't understand why this midfield signing couldn't have been done 21 days ago, but um, that's here, there, or nowhere. Um, if this is some player that Rangers have been monitoring for a long time, wouldn't it have been better for him to be going to the Spanish, uh, the, the Spain training camp, doing the two friendlies, and then joining up and being ready to go for now? But Rangers never do it the easy way, do they? They don't do it the sort of plain and simple way, but then there could have been a lot of moving parts on what happened, so... Um, it is what it is, um, you know, we've got him in now, but um, yeah, it's not the most ideal time as, as we're, we're going back to action again. It would have benefited from that sort of mini preseason, if you like, but it is what it is. He's through the door, can't be moaning too much, and if his quality hits the ground running, then that's all that matters. Uh, Lind uh, has came over that fear, uh, apparently, as well. Yeah, Lind is a striker that looks pretty good. Again, look, two Danish players that we're sort of monitoring this moment in time, again, could be... I think, again, I'm, I'm done though the days of, of trying to judge signings before they even before they even kick a ball because the players they get really excited about turn out to be crap and the ones that kind of fly under the radar like Glenn Kamara, Calvin Bassey I didn't even you know twitch an eyelid when those two players signed and then all of a sudden they turned out to be probably our better players Ariba was another one but um, then when you're talking about the players that you're looking at like we paid a lot of money for you know Lamas, Cinquentes, um, Dessas all these sorts of players just turn out to be kind of duds in general so again if they're not unknown who cares let's see what they're all about they have a fresh slate uh, no pressure and, and they can really go and express themselves here at Rangers and that's where we're going to judge them uh, and what they you know go on and do on the park how many trophies they win and then at the end of the day I don't like to be an accountant but I understand the, the, the state of affairs that is Rangers and what is the Scottish League is that we, we need to make money and turn a profit and that's the business model that we're in so come in do well play for the club play for the badge win plenty of trophies rack up some appearances, you know, get everyone dreaming, impress in Europe, and then, of course, go on to... There's never, never bigger and better things than Glasgow Rangers, but, you know, bigger paychecks and bigger elsewhere if that's what they're in for in terms of the money. So... All the best for them. As long as they're winning trophies for Rangers, that's all that matters. And then for you guys, that's all that matters uh, to, to us. Uh, we just care how many trophies they come in and collect and uh, have a smile and, and put a smile on our faces while they're, while, they're, while they're representing the jersey. That's all that matters. But guys, I'm not going to keep you too long. I know it's a Sunday, uh, but of course, uh, Rangers have signed Mohamed Diamande. It's a done deal. He is going to be there, just waiting for the official announcement in terms of the scarf above the head. Um, but that should be either today or tomorrow depending on when depending on when you're watching if you're watching this replay it may have already been announced uh, but today or tomorrow that will be officially announced it is a done deal don't worry um, and then tomorrow we start the whole sort of cycle again as we look for the next signings I know you guys are hungry for a striker and after last night's performance so am I uh, from Cyril Dessers you know we need a striker um, if we want to go and lift this title but guys let me know your thoughts on Mohamed Diamande down there in the comment section below and who do we need to sign next let me know down there in the comments uh that brings us to end today's live stream hit the like button hit the subscribe button i'll see you all next time take care Push.